signing who alleviates the burden on Casemiro's legs or a Moroccan maestro who could become a mainstay of the United midfield. Just how good is Sufyan Amrabat? Amrabat. Amrabat's long passing forms an important part of his game and the stats suggest he's a world leader in this respect. However, upon close inspection, the eye test reveals he is very, very good, but he does have some flaws. One of the issues lie in his biomechanics. He tends to lean back too much, resulting in an off-balance pass that hits underneath the ball, making some of them loopy. On the bright side, his curved passing is much better, showcasing a very nice club in his locker. Nevertheless, his long passing seems to go between hit and miss, oscillating between an absolute scorcher and at times aimless long balls. Overall, the attitude is commendable. He loves to get the play moving as soon as possible, which is definitely something to appreciate. However, it's worth noting that at times his pass doesn't give the receiver the easiest time. Often, they have to work hard to trap the ball due to his lack of desire to hit an easy pass. When it comes to possession play, Amrabat will prove to be an asset for the team. He's someone who's the kind of player that keeps it nice and tidy, handling the ball with finesse, under pressure, remains incredibly calm, showing comfort and receiving the ball from the defence or the goalkeeper during build-up plays, a skill that even surpasses Casemiro. Another feature is his ability to drop between the centre-backs to aid in the build-up where needed. We saw this with Morocco in particular, but he does it for Fiorentina too. So considering these attributes, he could become a tactically important weapon for Manchester United. He's someone who fits into that Dutch style of play with that number six dropping in deep and allowing the someone like Lissandro Martinez to have someone and Onana as well, a target to work with and he can help facilitate those little patterns of play in the build-up phase. <laughs> Defensively, Amrabat's style is quite like Declan Rice. He's someone who can do the sitting role, the holding role. We saw that with Morocco in the 4-1-4-1 but he's also able in that double pivot for Fiorentina to go further up the pitch and win the ball higher up the pitch. So despite his defensive volume not being super, super high, it's as high as a Declan Rice and he rarely gets it wrong when he decides to get stuck in. His ball winning skills are elite. He's a terrier. He's someone who's not afraid to go in for tackles, challenges. At times he can be susceptible to fouls or rash attempts to win the ball, but generally pretty accurate about his work. Potential downside of this aggressive play style is that he can get caught out of position at times, but like a Declan Rice, generally he knows when to push forward and when to sit back. His preference for sly tackling illustrates his aggressive approach to defending. His ability to read the game and intercept passes and screen the game is impressive. Again, this came to the fore, especially in the World Cup. United's pressing game would notably improve with him on the pitch. However, it's crucial to be aware of the downsides, such as that fouling issue and the risk of being caught on the wrong side of the attacker. Aerially, Amrabat is a huge downgrade to Casemiro. He tends to get beaten far too easily in the air. Weak, feeble, half-hearted attempts, doesn't seem to want to get hurt. And that's going to get exploited, especially in English football, at away grounds in particular. He seems to get bodied a lot. And I can imagine this giving the opposition a psychological advantage and exploiting him from set pieces too. And it's also a concern for United's pressing structure. Teams facing them may exploit this weakness by opting for long passes to alleviate pressure. Imagine a target man drifting away from the centre-backs and pinning himself against Amrabat, who might be the deepest lying uh, midfielder, especially when he forms that back free and he ends up losing the flick on header. So definitely something to watch out for. In terms of Amrabat's ball carrying, he doesn't have the same level of a Declan Rice in terms of consistently wanting to ball carry or being able to consistently ball carry. He doesn't have that sprint endurance to keep on running with the ball all through the game. He has to pick and choose his moments. Now, he's got quite a low success rate, but that could probably be explained by the fact that he does take on some quite risky dribbles when he does decide to dribble. But he can progress the game when he chooses to. He can, he's got that glide. He's got that power that can eat through the grass when he goes with the ball. And he's got quite a neat array of footwork. So I'm quite surprised with the success rate being so low. I'd say the eye test favours him being quite a good ball carrier. If anything, looking at him, I'd encourage him to run more with the ball because he seems quite comfortable with the ball and he's quite glued to his foot. So definitely something which I think United fans will enjoy. I think he will be quite press resistant 
and he showed that in the World Cup. So I feel like the stats aren't really doing him justice in this regard. Amrabat's stats from a creative perspective are really poor and that's concerning because if he does come into the United midfield to complement Casemiro and play alongside him in a double pivot, he's going to have to take on more creative responsibility. And From what we can see, Casemiro's got better creative stats. And from the eye test as well, when we see Amrabat go further forward, he hasn't got that sense of when to play the pass, how to play the pass. His decision making goes haywire. He just hasn't got that pause and that calmness of mind to really see where the defence is situated, where his teammates are situated, and how to open them up. He can at times hit the odd smart pass and split a defence open, but it's very rare, generally overhit passes, passes hit straight to the opposition. So what this means is that if Mount drops out of the side and he does play a double pivot of Amrabat and Casemiro, someone like Bruno Fernandes is going to have to take on a lot of the creative burden. In terms of goal for it, Amrabat offers nothing of substance. He can at times hit an eye-catching shot where he connects with the ball from distance, but it tends to go straight at the keeper when he's asked to show a bit more, aim for the corners, show a bit more finesse in his play. He tends to hit it over the bar or hit feeble attempts which just kind of roll past the goal. So not someone who, again, if he is going to play that double pivot, for United, is he going to be able to totally lost and Casemiro comes and gets the winner or a, a goal that you just don't expect your defensive midfielder to come up with? Amrabat just doesn't really have that in his locker. Tactically, we've said Amrabat reminds us a bit of Declan Rice in that he's played as a sitting midfielder for Morocco in that 4-1-4-1. He's played as a double pivot for Fiorentina in a 4-2-3-1. For United, I can see it again being a bit of both, I think. He could initially come in alongside Casemiro, especially in away games where they need a bit more defensive toughness in the side and they're going to look to counter-attack. But I think ultimately there'll be games where Casemiro is just rested and they'll use Amrabat next to perhaps Eriksen and Bruno Fernandes ahead of them or even Amrabat behind Mount and Bruno Fernandes. And I think what he's going to look for Amrabat to do is help progress United a bit more faster through the build-up phase, be a bit more involved than a Casemiro. And then in Onana, Lissandro Martinez, Amrabat, he's got three players there who look very comfortable in build-up situations. In conclusion, I think Amrabat is someone who will help United improve their possessional play. I think it's nice for Casemiro to have someone there who will give him some respite. Do I see Amrabat blossoming into a world-class midfielder? No. I think it's too late in his career to really progress to that level of play. But I think he's going to be a solid component. He's better than Fred. He's better than someone like Sabitzer. So I think tactically he does improve United. I think it's a smart signing on a loan deal. I think he could have even gone to Liverpool instead of Endo. And I think he could have been a really useful signing for them too. So I'm looking forward to seeing how he does in the Premier League. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, share and subscribe. And see you guys again next time. Bye.